Hello my friends and welcome to today's video. I'm Jeanette with Vivo Vintage Designs. In today's video I am going to show you how to draw a simple flower and then we're going to paint it in watercolor. So I have just a plain sheet of copier paper and a mechanical pencil and the first thing I did was I drew an oval. Now I recently did a video on how to draw this flower and I gave you step-by-step -step instructions. I'll be sure to link that video in the description box in case you haven't seen it. So take a look down there if you're interested in watching it. So I drew the oval and now I'm drawing circles. I want my petals to be kind of chubby little petals. And then I'm adding a small, some small petals around the center. They're facing upwards. Once I've got the basic drawing down, I'm going to retrace this and define my petals. Show which petals are in the front, which ones are in the back. I'm going to add a little scalloped edge around the top and the sides of some of the petals. And once you have it traced, I like to use a fine liner to go over it again because my eyesight is not that great. So while I'm tracing it, it makes my life easier. But of course you can skip this step if you like. Now here I decided to add a little bud and I drew the bud simply by drawing an oval and some curved lines to indicate separate petals within that bud. Then I added the base of the bud and the stem. However, once I started to trace this with the fine liner, I decided I wanted to move it up. So you'll notice later on as I'm tracing it that I'm not following my pencil lines. Now here I'm just drawing some leaves and because this is a made up flower, I can add whatever type of leaves I like. And I decided to do a stem with three leaves and the leaves are really easy to draw. Now, if for some reason you don't want to draw this or you don't feel confident in your abilities, I will post a picture of this line drawing that you can simply pause the video and take a screenshot and then print it out for yourself and use my line drawing for your um, painting. So now that I have traced my bud and everything, I like to erase my pencil lines because again, it makes it easier for me to trace. And I'm going to turn my copier paper over and I'm going to use this little piece of pencil. This is just a lead pencil. There's no wood around it. And I love these pencils because it makes this technique of tracing a lot simpler. I'll be using Arsh watercolor paper for this painting. It's 140 pound cold press, 100% cotton and these sheets are 9 by 12. I like to buy these pads because you get 12 sheets for about $18 and it's much easier to cut them into whatever size you like. If you buy the block, it's I love painting on the block and I have quite a few of those, but it's much more expensive and uh, in order to cut it, you have to remove it from the block, which defeats the purpose of buying, buying it in the block form. And then I use that little gadget there to cut my sheets. It makes it very easy. It's very inexpensive and you can even order re, um, new blades for it when they become dull. Okay, so now I've cut my watercolor paper and I have my image. I am going to hold it up to the light, which is what I'm doing off screen. And I'm trying to center that image onto my watercolor paper. And once I have it where I want it, I'm going to use a little bit of washi tape to adhere it to my surface and make sure that it makes contact with both sheets of paper. And then I'm going to outline it once more in pencil. And at this point, you can redefine any of your petals, your leaves, whatever you like. But just go around and trace it again and what this will do is deposit the graphite onto the watercolor paper now when you do this the lines are they're there and you can easily see them but they're a little bit fuzzy so you can skip this step if you like but because again my eyesight is not that great i like to use the mechanical pencil which has a really fine point to retrace it so i can see it clearly and then I use my kneadable eraser to lighten those lines a little bit 
so that uh, the watercolor does, rather the pencil lines don't show through the watercolor. So they're still defined. They're not fuzzy anymore. They're just lighter. Now for this painting, I'm going to be using my core watercolor paints. This is a, a set of 24. And I love these tints to store my watercolors in because they're very thin. They're very inexpensive. They come with, I believe, 40 half pans. And each half pan has a little magnet that you can attach to it. And I like to attach mine using a little bit of, even though they're self-adhesive, I like to use a little quick dry glue to make sure that it doesn't fall off because that's what usually happens. But you can see here that I've attached the magnet to each of the pans and I'm going to flip it over. There's one pan that I didn't attach a magnet to yet and you can see that's the one that fell out, but the others remain very secure. And then I like to create this little swatch card so I use a piece of watercolor paper, I swatch out my paints, and then I use packing tape, tape to laminate it and adhere it to the lid. And I use those tins for all the different brands of watercolor that I have. So now you may not have these colors, but um, the colors that I am using are sap green, green gold, alizarin crimson, cerulean blue, I did put it into my little ceramic palette there, but I decided not to use it later on. I have Azo Yellow and Van Dyke Brown. Now you can see that there is water in the colors that I am using. I have activated those pans by simply adding a few drops of water. I have two bowls of water. I bought this little nifty dish at home goods i think it was and i paid less than ten dollars for it if you went to an art supply store to buy one of these double bowls you would pay a small fortune for it so when you're at home goods or one of those stores take a look in their dish aisle even a simple white ceramic dish will make a great palette okay now let's get to the painting for this painting, I'm using the wet in wet technique. I'm using my size eight silver black velvet brush to wet down the petal. We're going to paint one petal at a time. So you can see that I've tilted my paper and I've lifted it so I can see the sheen in the light because when it's laying flat with the ring light, it's hard to see. So I made sure that the water was even, that I didn't miss any areas or have any puddles. And now I've switched to the smaller brush. This is a size four round and I am dipping it into the alizarin crimson and at the, I'm depositing that color at the base of the petal. Then I'm going around the sides of the petal to define them. And then I'm going to just add a couple of little dots here and there towards the tip of the petal so it doesn't blend into the white of the paper. Now I've cleaned my brush off and I've dabbed it on my paper towel to make sure I don't have a lot of water on it and I am pulling up veins in the petal. So here I'm depositing a little bit more color. I will be picking up some of the paint straight from the pan because I want it in a heavier consistency. And then again, cleaning my brush, dabbing it on the paper towel, and I am pulling up some veins. If you choose to do this, you don't have to do this, but if you choose to add these veins, make sure that you keep them curved in the direction that you'd like to indicate the petal is growing in. And when you move on to your second petal, make sure that you don't paint next to a wet petal because when wet touches wet, what happens is the paint from the one you previously painted will flow into the one that you're currently painting. So make sure to skip around. So here you see I've added the water. I held it up to the light to make sure that I had it completely covered. And now I'm depositing that alizarin crimson using the tip of my brush. I'm following the shape of the petal. And then I'm just going to add a little bit here and there again at the tip of that petal. And now I want to deposit a little bit more color at the base of that petal. Now, if you, I'm, I'm making this painting very beginner friendly. I'm only using one color, but if you are more advanced, you can add 
different colors to the petals for a little bit more definition and detail. But again, keeping this beginner friendly, I'm just using one color and I'm using it in, um, in different consistencies. So of course, the less water you use, the more saturated your color will be. The more water you add, the more diluted the color will be. So you can see here, I am starting to wet my third petal. And you can see that none of the petals are touching that I've painted. I'm holding it up to the light, making sure that I have the entire petal covered. And for this one, I went straight to the pan and I picked up the paint for a heavier consistency. And for this petal, because there are two petals that are laying over its side, uh, the sides of that petal that I'm painting, I'm making sure that I add a, a heavier consistency on the edge to show a little cast shadow from the petal above it. I'm sure you can hear Diesel's nails tapping on the floor. He's having a fit because he wants attention, which he wants all day long. And this is about the fourth time that I've attempted this voice over simply because he keeps interrupting me. I swear it's like having a toddler. I love him to pieces though. <laughs> so here I'm painting one of the small little petals that I added in the center. And you can see here I've painted it and I'm going to continue painting these petals, making sure that the petals next to the petal that I'm currently painting are completely dry. Now, if you can, if you'd like to use a blow dryer, you can do that. So here I'm painting in the flip of this particular petal on the bottom here. So I simply wet down that area, the part of the petal that is flipping up. And then I'm using a heavy consistency of paint and I'm adding it at the bottom of that little flip. I want to keep the top section a little bit lighter because it would be more in the light. And if your color runs too much, you can simply clean it, dab it on your paper towel and use the brush to lift some of that color like you see me doing here. And now you can see that as I painted the top portion of that petal, I kept a little bit shadow of shadow, not only at the base, but at the um, tip where, where it begins to flip over, just for the contrast. Now I'm painting the stem. So I'm using the green gold to put down my first layer. And then I'm using the sap green in a heavier consistency, and I'm running it along the left side of that stem. So the first layer was the, sa the uh, green gold and I covered the entire stem with that. And then on the left hand side, I picked up a heavier consistency of the sap green and I just ran it along that stem. And because it's still wet, it bleeds into the green gold and it gives you a nice shadow. Now here for this leaf, I am using dry, uh, wet on dry. So the paper is dry and I started out with the green gold. And as I painted along, I picked up some of the sap green and I blended the colors right on the paper. So you can see that the tip and the base of that petal are a little bit darker in the center. I use the green gold and it gives a little contrast in the leaf. So I did all the leaves in the same way. Here I am painting the center of the flower. So I'm using that Azo yellow and I'm using a heavy consistency and I'm just dotting in the center. I'm going to let that dry now. And while I wait for that to dry, I wanted to add a little bit of detail to the leaves. So I picked up a little bit of green and using the tip of the brush, I'm just running it through the leaves and creating a center vein and making sure that I curve that vein the way I want to indicate that that leaf is growing. Now that that center is dry, I've picked up the Van Dyke Brown and I'm adding a few dots of the Van Dyke Brown as well, making sure that I keep the center of the flower darker in between those three little petals that I did, because that would be mostly in shadow. 
So we're near the end of this painting. I hope that you've enjoyed this and that you do give it a try. Check the description box for links to the products used. Check out our Facebook group, Vivo Vintage Designs, where you can post your versions of the paintings and techniques learned on this channel. And please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Your interaction is really helpful and greatly appreciated. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.